I know people who are her age who are my color who say that word when they're saying a rap song. Should she and not it should be, be allowed retired. to say it? I don't, it should be retired. But I don't know if that makes her racist because she's singing a song or because some kids goaded her into well, singing a rap song. She, uh, she, yes, she thing. should not well, be saying I it. One thing I might add. But I don't know if that well, makes hold her on, racist. Hold on, hold uh, on. CNN's Dodd and Lemon defending the uh, University of Oklahoma frat mom who appeared on a video using the N-word multiple times. The university, of course, has expelled two students, two fraternity members who led the charge in that original racist video taken on a bus during a fraternity function. Uh, something to talk about with our panel. Uh, Republican strategist Ford O'Connell stays with us from Newsmax, Washington. We're also pleased to welcome in a new political panelist, uh, seeing things from the left and Skyping in from Boston. It's Brad Bannon of Bannon Communications Research. Uh, Brad, what do you make of Don Lemon saying, wait a minute, he can kind of understand this fraternity mother and some of the uh, controversy it engendered there with the CNN panel with whom he was visiting? Well, my opinion on the issue is we all be better off if no one used the n-word and i'm saying you know white people black people brown people orange people whatever uh it, it is a racist term and i don't think anybody white black brown or anything else should be using it including the uh, the, uh, the the den mother there uh or you know people generally it's just a word uh that shouldn't be in use in common society and we'd be better off if no one used it uh, Ford, your take on this, not only about the fraternity mother, but the two kids expelled without a hearing, boom, they're gone. Well, I have to agree with Brad. I think the word needs to be retired fully. L let me say this. I think that these kids embarrass themselves, their family, the University of Oklahoma, frat folks everywhere in the South. And to me, this is purely intolerable because these guys got what they deserve. Now, they may have their day in court, I don't know, but it seems that justice was served is based on what we've seen right now. Let me say the next thing, and what kills me here is why I have a personal beef with these guys, not just for their racist annex, but what's going to happen here is that the mainstream media is going to come down and indict the entire frat system and all southerners and basically call us all backwards racist and drunk. And that's my problem because this is going to lead to a stigma for everyone else. And uh, often under the guise of humor. Uh, gentlemen, Comedy Central's Larry Wilmore weighed in on the controversy. Let's take a listen to his perspective. That's right. They also kicked the fraternity off campus. So don't worry. You won't be seeing any more of those frat boys until they're your congressman. <laughs> yeah. Right. Welcome to America, everybody. That's how it works. <laughs> Okay, as a recovering member of Congress, for the record, I was not a member of a fraternity. But beside the point, Brad, the, the whole notion that, um, that kids make a mistake and they're kicked out without even a hearing, certainly there should be some sort of due process on that campus in Norman, shouldn't there? Well, yeah, I think what I would have done if I was the president of the University of Oklahoma, unfortunately I'm not, is I would have suspended the students. Uh, going through whatever can, uh, university judicial process they are, and if they're found guilty in the judicial process, then they should be expelled. So I think they should have suspended and given a hearing. So I disagree uh, with the expulsion. And uh, not to put a political cast on this, of course, we should note for the record that the president of the University of Oklahoma is former Senator David Boren. Uh, who obviously Ford is trying to deal with what he perceives to be a public relations problem nationally. Uh, final 20 seconds to you, Ford. I, I agree with Brad. They, they should have gotten due process. We saw what happened with the Duke lacrosse case, and we saw what happened with the UVA rape hoax. So I'm going to be honest with you. They need to have due process, but clearly the president of the University of Oklahoma is worried about a PR nightmare. And uh, mindful of that, there may be a backlash because of the absence of due process. That could very well be the next chapter, even as President Boren tries to move this off center stage there in Norman. Gentlemen, stay right where you are. Round two with our political panel is coming up as America's Forum continues. When I got to work as Secretary of State, I opted for convenience to use my personal email account, 
which was allowed by the State Department because I thought it would be easier to carry just one device for my work and for my personal emails instead of two. Hillary Clinton in her press conference yesterday at the United Nations saying that she opted for convenience. Now, as you might expect, the Republican response was strong, swift, and certain. What does it mean to Hillary's presidential hopes? Let's continue our discussion now. The political panel on the right, Ford O'Connell from Newsmax, Washington, and on the left, Brad Bannon president of Bannon Communications Research from Boston. So Brad, uh, Hillary at the press conference yesterday, did she make an effective case? Well, I think I agree with what she said. Uh, she uh, said that it would have been better if she had separated uh, her personal emails from State Department emails. She regretted doing that, and I think she was right. I think she made a mistake. Uh, honestly, I don't think it will have much effect on the campaign. Uh, a classic example of that is the House of Representatives is now on its, what, sixth uh, committee uh, investigating Benghazi, and the Benghazi issue it has, has, has had absolutely no impact on her standing in the polls. And I think this, this will go the, same, go the same course. I don't think it's going to have an impact one way or the other. She admitted she was wrong, and I think she was right to admit she was wrong. All right, Ford, your take, your reaction to Hillary's uh, explanation yesterday. Her press conference basically brought up more questions than it answered. Look, this is not going to end until she turns over that private server to a third party. And, and, and not only that, there's a lot of questions about the private server. Apparently it was set up for Bill Clinton. I mean, how old is this thing? And in all honesty, this is what happens. Hillary Clinton is a double-dealing political animal who will cut corners, and she's above the law, and she has no problem enforcing those rules on others, but they don't apply to her because she's a blindly political animal. This is going to continue to dog her. The question is, is whether or not Republicans can turn this into a theme and discuss how she's inauthentic and double-dealing in all of her political life, and if they can do that, then they may be able to stick this on her. Will this single event torpedo her campaign? No. But it's something that can create doubt with independence. Uh, Ford, you mentioned the term private, and privacy is something that the former Secretary of State spoke about yesterday. Let's listen what she had to say, then we want both you gentlemen to react. Because they were um, personal and private uh, about matters that uh, uh, I believed were within the scope of uh, uh, my personal uh, privacy, and that particularly of other people. They had nothing to do with work, um, but uh, I didn't uh, see any reason to keep them. Uh, she's referring to uh, basically deleting over 30,000, quote, private emails. And, Brad, can, can you see the problem when she asks us to trust her, they were all private? See how it makes a problem regardless of political label? Well, this is how I feel. She, she's created this problem because she admitted yesterday she did the wrong thing. And if she had had two separate email accounts like she should have, we wouldn't have this problem. Uh, if it's me, I turn over everything because if they turn over, if Senator uh, Secretary Clinton turns over everything, people are not going to find anything. Uh, you know, except they're going to know a lot about how uh, uh, Secretary Clinton felt about uh, Chelsea's marriage. Uh, we will also find out a lot about how uh, Secretary Clinton felt when her mother died. But I can always sort of guess what her reaction was to those two events. Uh, but she'd be better off because uh, people keep harping on this until she does it, and I hope she does release the server because it will show there's nothing nefarious going on here. Final 15 seconds to you, Ford O'Connell. You can never trust a Clinton. The bottom line is there's a reason why she had a private server so no one could see it. And, and that's the bottom line. And, and that's how Hillary Clinton operates. She's an ambitious political animal who knows the rules and has been in government for 10, 15 years now. She broke it and she didn't care. Uh, and on that note, a somewhat contentious note, we will thank Brad Bannon for his first appearance with us on the political panel. Brad, come back real soon. Ford O'Connell, always great to have you. And we'll be right back on America's Forum.